Playing with Power MTG is supported by Flipside Gaming. When you use the promo code POWER in all caps, you get 10% off orders $10 or more. It saves you money and helps us out at the same time. Also, if you use our promo code from July 8th through August 16th, you'll automatically get entered into a drawing to win a set of all four of the new Commander 2019 decks. Check out the link in the description below for more information. Finally, consider supporting us on Patreon. You'll get early access to videos and many more perks. Check out the links in the description below and subscribe today. Thanks! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Today we are bringing some familiar decks to the table and some very new faces to the CEDH scene. We cannot wait for you to see them in action. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan piloting Feldegriff. That's right, Feldegriff. This deck named Hippo Hulk is a Shuffle Hulk variant using a very creative line to combo off for the win by giving your opponents infinite hippos and killing them. This deck was submitted by one of our Patreons. In fact, it was submitted by our very first Patreon and we cannot thank him and all of our Patreons for all of their support. Ryan didn't like his opening hand so he mulligans it away. His final hand contains a City of Brass, Nature's Claim, Tundra, Mystic Gate, Sensei's Divining Top, Island, and a Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Next, we have Mike piloting Zur the Enchanter. This version of Zur, called Zuran Consultation, attempts to slow down the board with stacks and hate pieces, such as Arcane Laboratory, Humility, and Rest in Peace. Mike's opening hand contains a Scrubland, Tundra, City of Brass, Demir Signet, Swords to Plowshares, Demonic Tutor, and a Flusterstorm. After that, we have Garrett piloting Sidisi, Brood Tyrant. This Flash Hulk deck includes multiple lines to combo off, including Hermit Druid, Necrotic Ooze, and of course, a Flash Hulk package. Garrett didn't like his opening hand, so he mulligans it away. His final opening hand contains a Nurturing Peatland, Wall of Roots, Survival of the Fittest, Flash, Necrotic Ooze, Yavamai Coast, and a Flash of Insight. Finally, we have Folger bringing his own competitive creation to the table, Marath, Will of the Wild. This unique CEDH deck takes its cues from Blood Pot and adds an additional support of Marath in the command zone. Folger's opening hand contains a Plains, Rest in Peace, Null Rod, Spirit of the Labyrinth, Sarah Ascendant, Birds of Paradise, and a Grove of the Burn Willows. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Garrett wins the game of Truth or Dare and gets to start us off. Garrett plays a Nurturing Peatland and passes. Folger plays a Plains for turn and immediately casts Sarah Ascendant. With a godlike turn one play, everyone sighs deeply and Folger passes the turn. Mike plays a Tundra for turn and passes. Ryan plays a City of Brass for turn and passes. Garrett plays a Yavamaya Coast. He taps his Nurturing Peatland to help cast Survival of the Fittest. He ends his turn. Folger starts off his turn by attacking Garrett with a Sarah Ascendant. In his second main phase, he plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He cracks it for a Stomping Ground into play untapped, paying two life. Next, he casts Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. In response, Ryan taps his City of Brass to cast Nature's Claim, targeting Garrett's Survival of the Fittest. Nature's Claim resolves, Survival is destroyed, and Garrett gains 4 life. Then Thalia resolves. Folger ships the turn to Mike. Mike plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Tundra for turn. He taps his City of Brass to help cast Sensei's Divining Top. He passes. On his turn, Garrett taps his Nurturing Peatland to help cast Carpet of Flowers. He ships the turn to Folger. Folger plays a Grove of the Burn Willows for turn. He attacks Mike for 8. In his second main phase, he casts Birds of Paradise. He follows up with a Spirit of the Labyrinth. Folger ends his turn. At the end of Folger's turn, Mike cracks his Flooded Strand to help fetch up an Underground Sea. He then casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Thalia. Thalia is exiled and Folger gains 2 life. On his turn, Mike plays a Scrubland. He casts a Demir Signet. Next, he casts Demonic Tutor. Mike passes the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan spends his top to look at the top three cards of his library and rearranges them. He plays a Waterlog Grove for turn. He taps his Grove to cast Finehorn Elves. Ryan gives the turn to Garrett. In his main phase, Garrett adds two green through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts Wall of Roots. He taps his Peatland to help cast Dark Confidant. He plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He cracks it for an underground sea. Garrett passes. Folger plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He casts his commander, Marath, Will of the Wild. Marath enters with three 1-1 counters on it. 
He attacks Mike with his creatures, and Mike takes 9. In his second main phase, he cracks his Scalding Tarn and fetches up a Sacred Foundry into play Untap, paying 2 life. He cast Rest in Peace. Both of the Flash Hulk players across from him die a little inside, and Fulger ends his turn. Mike plays a City of Brass for turn. He taps his City of Brass to cast the bane of every magic judge's existence, humility. With the biggest of wrenches thrown in everyone's plan, Mike passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan spins his top to look at the top three. He plays a Mystic Gate for turn. Since sometimes the best permanent removal is player removal, Ryan attacks Mike for one. He ships the turn to Garrett. Garrett jumps on the bandwagon of player removal and attacks Mike for two. He does nothing else and passes. Folger plays a forest for turn. He also hops on the wagon and attacks Mike for seven. In his second main phase, he casts Null Rod. In response, Ryan activates his Sensei's Divining Top to look at the top three. He then flips his top to draw a card and puts the top on top of his library. With nothing else, Null Rod resolves and Folger gives the turn to Mike. Mike plays a Windswept Heath for turn and passes. Ryan plays an Island for turn. He attacks Folger for one and ends his turn. During his first main phase, Garrett's Carpet of Flowers trigger goes onto the stack. Mike sees what's happening with Humility on the table, so he begins to bargain with Garrett. He tells him that if he promises not to attack him this turn, he will crack his fetch for another island to give him an additional mana through his carpet. Garrett agrees, and Mike cracks his Windswept Heath to fetch up a Hallowed Fountain into play tapped. Then the carpet trigger resolves, and Garrett adds three blue through his carpet. He plays a Sunken Ruins for turn. He taps his Nurturing Peatland to help cast Flash of Insight, where X equals three. He looks at the top three, puts one into his hand, and the rest on the bottom. Garrett passes the turn. Folger starts off his turn by casting Karn, the Great Creator. He activates his Karn to make Null Rod a 2-2 creature. We had to ask about this interaction to make sure we got this right. When Karn makes an artifact a creature with humility out, does it become a 1-1 or a 2-2? In a very simplified explanation, since Karn was activated after humility was out, it became a 2-2. If the order was reversed, say that Karn animated an artifact and then humility was cast in the same turn, it would be a 1-1. So we wanted to verify that this was right. So we verified. Like, a lot. With both the level 1 and a level 2 judge verifying the power and toughness being correct, Folger moves to attacks. Folger attacks Mike for 9 with his creatures, including his Null Rod. In response, Mike casts Into the Royal, targeting Morath. Mike takes 5, and Folger shifts the turn. Mike plays a Silent Clearing for turn. He casts a Dark Confidant. He passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it for a Tropical Island. He gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett plays a Misty Rainforest as well for turn, and passes. Folger starts off his turn by playing Kessig Wolf Run. In any other scenario, everyone would wonder what that card was doing in a CEDH deck, but in this game, that is not the case. Everyone is suddenly very scared of Folger, especially Mike. He activates Karn again, animating his Null Rod. He attacks Mike with his Null Rod, Spirit of the Labyrinth, and Birds of Paradise. Mike blocks the Spirit of the Labyrinth with his Dark Confidant. Folger activates Kessig Wolf Run, targeting the Null Rod, pumping it for lethal, and killing Mike. With nothing else, Folger ends his turn. Ryan plays a Polluted Delta for turn. He cracks it for a Breeding Pool, into play tapped. He passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Garrett cracks his Misty Rainforest, fetching up a Bayou onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, since Humility is no longer on the battlefield, Garrett's Dark Confidant triggers, and he reveals a Tropical Island. He plays a Tropical Island for turn, and passes. On his turn, Folger recasts Morath. Morath enters with three 1-1 counters on it. He activates Karn, animating his Null Rod. He casts a Scavenging Ooze. The two Flash Hulk players aren't really sure what options they have left, and Folger moves to attacks. He attacks Ryan for two and Garrett for six. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan plays a Besiju, who shelters all for turn. Everyone says that's a super scary card in Flash Hulk, since it makes the Flash uncounterable. But Ryan shrugs and passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Folger activates Morath, removing a counter and shooting Dark Confidant. Garrett draws his card for turn. He stares down a boatload of creatures, a machine gunning Morath, two Null Rod effects, and a rest in peace, and decides to pass the turn. Folger plays a Windswept Heath for turn. He casts Yeast on the Wanderer Bard. 
He activates Karn, animating his Null Rod again. He attacks Ryan for 12. He passes. Ryan plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying 2 life. He ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Garrett cracks his Nurturing Peatland to draw a card. In his main phase, Garrett adds 4 blue through his Carpet of Flowers. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Rest in Peace. He activates Wall of Roots to add a green to his mana pool. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Wall of Roots. He searches up a card into his hand. He follows up by casting Flash. Flash resolves, and he puts onto the battlefield what he tutored up, which is a Protean Hulk. Protean Hulk dies through Flash's ability, and the Hulk trigger goes onto the stack. Since some of his main combo pieces are in his hand, he has to fetch up a different line. He fetches up a Hermit Druid, Deathrite Shaman, Hapless Researcher, and a Gilded Drake onto the battlefield. Gilded Drake enters the battlefield, and he exchanges control of Sarah Ascendant. Next, he casts Mogus's Marauder. The Marauder resolves, and he targets Hermit Druid and Deathrite Shaman with the Marauder's ability. In response, Vulture activates Marath, removing a counter and shooting Hermit Druid. Moving to Plan B, he casts Laboratory Maniac. He passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Vulture cracks his Windswept Teeth to fetch up a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying 2 life. He activates Scavenging Ooze twice, targeting Garrett's Hermit Druid and Protean Hulk in his graveyard. He also activates Marath, removing a counter to shoot his Sarah Ascendant and sending Marath back into the command zone. During Folger's upkeep, Garrett activates Deathrite Shaman to exile Windswept Heath from Folger's graveyard. Folger starts off his turn by activating Karn, animating Nullrod. He attacks Garrett for 5. Garrett declares no blocks and takes the damage. In his second main phase, he recasts Rest in Peace. He shifts the turn to Ryan. At the end of Folger's turn, Ryan taps the City of Brass and Waterlog Grove to flash into Fairy. Mage of Zalafir. He falls up by flashing in his commander, Feldegrift. Ryan untaps and draws. He looks at the board state and at his hand and passes the turn. In his main phase, Garrett adds four blue through his carpet of flowers. He casts Ponder. He looks at the top three and draws a card. He casts a Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Tainted Pact onto the top of his library. He ends his turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Folger activates Yison, fetching up a Caustic Caterpillar. He then sacks the Caterpillar to blow up Garrett's Carpet of Flowers. Folger starts off his turn by casting Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter resolves and Folger searches up a Kiki-Jiki, Mirror Breaker. He casts Kiki-Jiki. He activates Karn, animating Nullrod. He activates Kiki-Jiki, targeting Gilded Drake. Gilded Drake enters and its trigger goes onto the stack, targeting Ryan's Teferi. With the trigger on the stack, Ryan decides that the beatdown plan seems to be his only way out. So he taps his lands, paying 4 life, and flashes in Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Everyone goes crazy not knowing what to do with a play like that, and Ryan draws 4 cards off of Kozilek's cast trigger. After it resolves, the Gilded Drake trigger resolves and exchanges with Teferi. Truly stunned, Folger takes a moment and decides to attack Garrett with his Gilded Drake. He passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan casts a Brainstorm for turn. He draws three and puts two back on top. He attacks Folger with Kozilek. The Annihilator trigger goes onto the stack, and Folger sacks Nullrod, Birds of Paradise, Karn, and one of his lands. He declares no blocks and takes 12. In his second main phase, Ryan plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He passes. Garrett draws his card for turn and immediately casts Tainted Pack. Folger looks at his hand and realizes that he took Ryan's Teferi, so Ryan can't do anything about it. One by one, they both pass priority, and Tainted Pack resolves. Garrett exiles his entire library. He sacks his hapless researcher to draw a card and win the game through Lab Maniac. Table! Ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting game. We love off-the-wall decks and the crazy interactions they have. Congrats to Garrett on his win. His Flash Hulk deck was set back due to a lot of hate, but he persevered even through those obstacles. Folger's deck dominated the board in a way that people never really saw coming. It was essentially Blood Pod with a machine gun in the command zone. Mike was taken out pretty early. People really hated humility and didn't know how to deal with it other than just remove Mike from the game entirely. Ryan got land flooded throughout the game and unfortunately really couldn't make any sort of impactful moves. After his flashing in of Kozilek, the board was too distracted by an Eldrazi in CEDH to remember the lab man on the board. The player of the game was Folger. 
He was clearly directing the action of the game, and everyone pivoted to everything he was doing. The most valuable card was Rest in Peace. A 2CMC enchantment completely shut down half the players at the table. A special thanks to Nathan Jones for letting us play his Hippo Hulk deck. It was a lot of fun to pilot that night, and the Hulk lines are very creative and very cool. We highly recommend that you check out his deck in the description below. If you have a deck you'd like to submit, please check out the description and submit your decks into our submission form. Patreons get priority selection, so subscribe to our Patreon today. That about does it for this episode. If you like this content, please like the video. It really helps us out. If you want to see more, please subscribe to our channel. We're making new videos all the time. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.